Hello everyone! Uh, this next game was played in 2011. It was the Croatian Team Championship Finals. And uh, actually this game was played by me. I played uh, against an international master also from Croatia. And uh, at the time this game was played I was rated around 2000 and my opponent was an international master rated around 2400. And uh, this game perfectly illustrates how not everything in chess is about good moves. Uh, and uh, I prepared for this game. Uh, I mean, I prepared uh, about two or three hours. I, you know, prepared openings for my opponent and uh, studied his uh, style a bit. Uh, but uh, as I knew that uh, he would play knight to f3 on the first move, uh, it's pretty hard to prepare for someone who plays knight to f3 on the first move. Uh, so my opponent was white and uh, I was playing with the black pieces. So let's see this game. We have knight to f3, uh, knight to f6, uh, g3. Uh, g6, we have b3, I played bishop to g7, uh, bishop to b2, and now castles. And this is something like, a, uh, this is a, re a reti opening, uh, something like a nimzo Larsen variation. Uh, we have a bishop to g2, uh, I played d5, c4, c6, uh, my opponent castled, knight b to d7, uh, he played queen to c2, uh, e6, and d4. And uh, here probably the best plan for me would have been to, to play b6, bishop b7 and continue to, to play normal. Uh, but I played knight to e4 as I saw some games that he played and uh, some of the games turned out uh, pretty good for black. Uh, he went knight, uh, knight b to d2, uh, I played f5 and uh, here he played b4. And I didn't really understand the idea uh, about this b4, uh, as it seemed like a weird move. I thought he would uh, probably transfer the, the game to the queen side, play rook b1 and push a4 and maybe b5. Uh, but uh, I didn't really think that it mattered, this b4 move. So I simply continued to play. I played uh, b6 and I was ready to play bishop to b7 and push c5 and, uh, well, uh, I would wait for him to, to see what his plan was. Uh, but uh, this b b6 move was actually a, a great blunder, as uh, he played c captures on d5, and it was only now that I realized what I have done. As uh, as you can see that uh, now I can't really capture with uh, with the e pawn. If e if he captures here on d5, then he simply captures queen captures on c6. So after this c captures on d5, I have to capture with the c pawn, and so I did. It's pretty much forced if I don't want to be down a pawn. I played c captures on d5. And uh, here my opponent played queen to c6. And as you can see, he's attacking my rook on a8 and uh, also my pawn on e6. And uh, I was very sad. I mean, I knew I knew this would happen, but uh, uh, it all came so quickly. This was like move 13, and uh, I, I've been preparing for the game longer, longer than I've actually played the, the game. And uh, here I went into a deep uh, think, and uh, I was uh, thinking for about 45 minutes, maybe even more. And my opponent uh, got up from the table, he came back to the table, then he got up from the table again and he was, you know, walking around the tournament hall watching some games. And uh, here I thought about a lot of ideas. I, I thought about bishop to a6, maybe uh, giving up my e6 pawn for some counterplay, but uh, I, it didn't really seem good. Uh, but one thing I knew is that uh, if I allow queen captures on e6, that I can pretty much surrender the game. And uh, there was no way to save both the rook and the, the e6 pawn. So after about 45 to 50 minutes, uh, when my opponent uh, came back to the table, I played uh, queen to e7. And uh, he was, it was like he was very disgusted with this move I played. As uh, I decided to defend the e6 pawn and uh, let him grab my rook here on a8. And uh, I played queen e7, I grabbed my cigarettes, I went to the bar, I ordered uh, a cup of coffee and, you know, I just uh, drank my coffee and I was waiting for him to make a move, uh, to capture the rook. And uh, in this position he actually took even more than I did on the previous move, he was uh, thinking for like 55 minutes, maybe, maybe even an hour, I think it was something less than an hour. And uh, I saw him make a move and uh, when I got back, uh, back to the table I saw the move queen to a4. And I was like, why didn't why, why didn't he take the rook? And uh, you know, I did have some ideas of what to play if he captures the rook, but mostly my plan was to to resign the game, uh, as uh, I saw that if, for example, queen captures rook, I had some ideas uh, like maybe knight to c5 and uh, try and trap the queen using bishop to a6, 
uh, but the queen would always wiggle out. But uh, he also probably saw something like this and, uh, well, he, he used too much calculation and in the end uh, he, he decided it was best not to grab the rook. And uh, I, I don't know, even now I think it was maybe due to, due to his rating. Uh, he was more than 400 uh, rating points uh, above me, so... Uh, I guess he thought that uh, whatever he plays, he, he's still gonna beat me, uh, but uh, at least this way he, he won't grab a rook and then lose the queen. So may maybe that's the reason why he didn't uh, take the rook. So in this position he actually played queen to a4, and I was really... I was... I didn't know what to say here, uh, and I immediately played b5. So I decided to sacrifice this pawn and go straight, straight into the, uh, the end game. Uh, he played queen capture some b5, I played rook to b8, uh, he played queen to uh, a5, and I uh, played queen, uh, knight capture some d2. We have knight capture some d2, and now queen capture some b4. So going straight, straight for the end game. He can't uh, grab a pawn here because his bishop is hanging, so he played queen capture some b4, and uh, I recapture, rook capture some b4. And uh, this did allow uh, bishop to a3, but uh, I was actually going for this. Uh, so I played uh, rook captures on d4, grabbing a pawn, and he took my rook. Uh, bishop captures on f8, and king captures on f8. And okay, he is up an exchange, but I'm up a pawn, and uh, I have the bishop pair. And this will this will prove to be okay. Uh, we have knight to b3, uh, attacking my rook, uh, rook to a4, uh, rook to c1, uh, now uh, first knight to, c, uh, knight to b6, protecting the bishop, so I couldn't really grab another pawn here. Uh, he defends the pawn, rook to c2, and now knight to c4. We have rook f to c1, he doubles up on the c-file, but this doesn't really worry me, as he can never open up the c-file here. Uh, I play king to, king to e7, uh, getting my king into the game. We have e3, king to d6, uh, bishop to f1, now attacking my knight, and now bishop to a6. Okay, I'm still not letting him open up the c-file. Uh, knight to d2, attacking my knight, and now king to king to c5, now protecting the knight one more time. Uh, rook to b1, he wants to infiltrate my position using the b-file, but I simply play uh, bishop to b5, and not allowing him. Uh, he goes knight to b3 with check, uh, I go back, king to d6, uh, we have knight to c1, uh, a6, now cementing that bishop on b5, uh, rook to b3, we have h6, uh, knight to e2, uh, knight to a5, uh, rook to b1, rook to a3, uh, knight to d4, and uh, I think it was in this position that he actually uh, offered a draw, uh, but I actually declined the draw, as I uh, I thought if, if he didn't beat me when I gave him a whole rook, uh, <laughs> I really want to win this game. And uh, I played bishop captures on d4. He played bishop captures on b5, and here I played bishop captures on e3. So f captures on e3, and only now do I recapture this bishop on b5, so a captures on b5, and rook captures on b5. And here I play rook to c, uh, a knight to c4, and now I'm attacking this pawn one more time, I mean twice, and he can't defend this pawn. So he played uh, king to f2, and I just grabbed a pawn, a knight captures on e3. And uh, he's still up the exchange, but uh, I'm, up, uh, I'm up two pawns, so this is, well, pretty much an equal position. Uh, uh, he played rook to b6 check, I played uh, king to e5, and here he played uh, rook c to c6, uh, threatening to grab my e6 pawn. And in this position I played knight to g4 with check, and uh, here we agreed to a draw. Uh, because whatever he does, I'm gonna grab all of these pawns, and well, I can simply just uh, continue checking him, so... Uh, it, it, was, it was at this position that we agreed to a draw. And this was the strongest opponent I ever drew against, uh, the, my first draw against an international master. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely <laughs> proof that uh, it's not all about making good moves. Uh, sometimes there's, a, there's a, <laughs> a little bit of psychology involved. As, uh, like I said, in this position, after, after he played this b4 move and I played b6, this terrible blunder, and queen to c6, uh, here, if I if I allowed him to capture this uh, e6 pawn, uh, my position would have been destroyed, uh, like immediately. But by playing queen to e7, which is which is a terrible move, I actually managed to to draw a game against an international master. So yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, you were <laughs> you were all asking me to show one game that I played. So 
uh, what better game than than the one uh, where I managed to <laughs> to trick my opponent? So yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. And uh, have you ever played a a, a game like this? Uh, for uh, I mean, in classical chess, in classical time controls. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, I'll see you soon.